In this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to create a splatter ink effect for a transition by doing it with masks. This comes as a response to a request from one of my subscribers. Let me show you a somewhat finished example of a project and then I'll show you how I accomplished that. The first thing I needed to do was to go to an image editing software program to create several successive growing masks. You may use a product different than the one I'm going to use, but let me give you a bit of the technique by switching to Photoshop Elements. And in this program, or a similar one, what I did was I created a new file. And in this case, it's a 1920 by 1080. I wanted a white background and I clicked on OK. And then I imported an image and you use the place command in Photoshop Elements. And I'm going to place an image here simply called Ink Stain. And what I'd like to do is make sure that it's more than big enough to suit my project. What I'm going to do now is save this as number 5. So we're going to have five transitions. I'll go File, Save As. We're going to save it as a JPEG. And I'll just call it, in this case, I5. Then what I want to do is cut some of it out. And I'm going to do this in a very graphic way, not make it as careful as I normally would. and. One thing I want to do is make sure I don't remove everything from the right and left because I found out that sometimes in PowerDirector it will re-center the image and I don't want that to happen. So I'll take this much of the image away. I'll do a file save as. We're going to save the slightly smaller one. Again, as a JPEG. That will work just fine. And I'll save, save this one as I4. Click on OK. And then we'll take even more of it away. We'll call this I3. And the next time we'll save it as I2. And the last one we'll save as I1. And now we can get back to PowerDirector. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break our movie up into segments. So what I want to do is change my time indicator here. Let's go by second. I get to the next second. I'll do control T to split the first section. We'll do it again. Control T and we'll do it one more time. So now I have one, two, three, four, five segments. Let me do another one because I really need six. I'll show you why in a moment. So each segment, I'm going to add a mask that's a little larger than the one before. So I click on, let's go to my first segment. We'll click on our designer in PowerDirector 17 or 365. Go to Mask Designer. And then in Mask Designer, we're going to create our own image mask. So I click on the icon. And, and when I get to the folder where I save my images, I'll click on the I1 and click on Open. So I just created the mask with the smallest amount. I'll click on Create Image Mask again. Go to the same folder. We'll do one for I2 and click on Open. Create the a third one by clicking on the same button, going to I3. Repeat the process again, as you can see, with I4. And finish it up with I5. And now we have five image masks, each one larger than the one before it. So what I want to do in, since I'm in the first image, I'm going to use the first one, click back on that, and now I'm going to click on Invert Mask. And so I now have a little bit of the mask on the left and some on the right. Again, what I found is if I don't have anything on either end, they may be centered, which means they won't merge the way I wanted them to. So click on OK. 
Here's the first one. The second block will go designer, mask designer. I've got them all in now, so I click on the second and make sure I click on invert. Third one, I highlight that, mask designer. Go to my third largest, invert it, click OK. Fourth one, same process, designer, mask designer. Go to the fourth largest image and click on invert. If I were to do this uh, very carefully, I probably would have more than five segments. But uh, we'll just repeat the process here for mask designer on this one. Go to the largest and invert it. And then what I'm going to do is go to the last one, add that same image for my mask. But now I'm going to go to the opacity scale. I'll set it in the beginning frame by clicking the diamond on the opacity value. Then I'll move over, say, a couple of seconds. Now I'm going to change the mask opacity. So I go to the mask opacity scale and turn it back to zero. And now, if we go back to our movie mode and play the clip from the beginning, we'll see that it looks like it comes in one segment at a time until it's all there and then it dissolves. There's another thing to do that's even nicer on the last segment. Let's let me go, go back into that in our mask designer again. And in this case, I want to change another keyframe. Let's change the scale. Make sure we're at the left side. I'll hit, click a scale value by clicking the diamond. And then if I look at my mask values, here's my mask scale on the left. I'll move over to match the other diamond by clicking on the right arrow. Make sure I'm back on the scale segment. And in this case, we're going to change the scale and make it large. Click on OK. So when we go back to the beginning, we find not only do the segments add one upon another in a, in a splatter method, but then when we're done, it fades out and grows, and so you have your transition. Now, once again, if I were doing this in a very careful way, I would change the design of these to make them all look like splatters. I wouldn't have solid hard edges on them, but this is just for illustrative purposes. I hope this has been helpful for you if you want to use masks to create this kind of effect in CyberLink PowerDirector.